Jimmy is here once again. So this week's video is a little bit different because we're not talking about the actual medieval period or about a period in history. Instead, we're going to talk a little bit about how to get to know those periods of history a little bit better. How to get a little bit of research done, especially if you want to be making historical clothing or if you want to be getting involved with historical reenactment. So let's go! I come at this subject with a bit of an unfair advantage because I am a research master's graduate and love research and I'm an absolute nerd for diving into books, websites, whatever you've got, throw me at an archive and I'll sit in there for days at a time and starve to death if I'm not careful. I love researching. It's been my hobby for decades. I absolutely love just finding stuff out. I'm one of these people who will get interested in almost any subject if you give me enough matter on it. I know a lot of people out there don't come at research from that point of view, can find it challenging, can find it difficult, and I completely sympathise and I understand. It's not something that affects me, but I know that it affects a lot of people out there. So how do you go about researching for historical reenactment? I am a man in his bedroom on the internet, and I try to make my videos as accurate and as rigorously researched as I can, but I will make mistakes. Everybody does. But I give myself credit that I am one of the people on YouTube who doesn't just spout a load of garbage. Almost all of the stuff that I claim is at least supported in some way by some degree of academic level research. So that kind of is my first tip, is don't just believe YouTubers. There are a lot of history tubers out there who spout absolute garbage and who have damaging agendas behind their videos. I'm not going to name any names here, but there are racist, white supremacist, bigoted people on this website who make history videos about medieval Europe, and in particular about the Vikings, who are completely talking out of their asses. I'm not going to name any names, but they're out there. Be very, very careful, because it's really easy to see somebody who talks authoritatively, who talks with a confident manner, and who seems to know what they're talking about, and kind of take it as read that they must therefore be as worthy of being listened to as anybody else. When they're not, there are also people on this website who have PhDs, decades of excellent research behind them, and are making videos that deserve a great deal more attention. And that's tough. But that's the internet, baby. I think my second tip is probably going to be to just go out there and see what you can find. The internet is your friend, and if your Google Foo is strong, then you should be able to find some pretty good, well-supported research out there to help your reenactment journey. I tend to genuinely start most things with Wikipedia, because Wikipedia, far from being the absolute no man's land of lunacy that it was 20 years ago is now getting a lot better, especially on bigger mainstream topics. There are thousands of people out there, many of them highly qualified researchers in their own right, who are editing Wikipedia every day. I edit Wikipedia most weeks. I'll pop onto pages that I'm reading on subjects that I'm interested in or that I have a professional interest in, and I'll edit stuff and you know make corrections here and there or pop in a couple of citations. Citations are your friend. And that brings me on to my next little tip. So once you've finished reading an article, or you've finished reading a blog post, or whatever it may be, a Wikipedia page, take a look at the external links, references, and reading list. That is your key. The reading list doesn't just tell you what you should read next, it tells you where what you've just read came from, right? It's the source. It's the source of the information that you've just read. And there's a reason why we make students put reading lists and bibliographies in every essay, it's because we want to know where the hell they get their information from. If you're reading a blog post or an article that doesn't have a reading list or any kind of bibliography and doesn't even mention where they got their information, that should be a red flag to you, that maybe the information you're reading isn't all that accurate. In terms of Viking stuff, if they can name the runestone that they're talking about, or they can actually show the artifact that they're describing, or the museum display where the artifact is at the very least, that's usually a good sign. Here in the UK we have something called uh, finds.org.uk, the Portable Antiquities Scheme. And it's amazing because it will give you the find spot for every artifact that's been registered on it. It's a fantastic resource and if you are in Britain and looking for 
somewhere to find Viking Age artefacts that you can take to a jeweller or looking for a specific style of artefact that you want more information on, you can't go much better than the Portable Antiquity Scheme. They even have guides telling you how to identify certain types of objects, like brooches and beads and belt buckles and all kinds of stuff. It's really, really useful. Failing that, if you don't have access to that, there are museums. Museums are great. That's my next tip. I go on museum websites all the time. Some of my favourite museum catalogues include the British Museum catalogue, um, the National Museum of Wales' catalogue, and places like uh, the National Museum Ireland Archaeology collection. Collections online are a super useful resource. Some of them have fantastic zoomable images that are almost microscopic in quality. The British Libraries online collection has some fantastic manuscripts that you can look at. They've got, they've got, I mean, they've got the Saint Cuthbert Gospel book on there. You can just look at the Saint Cuthbert Gospel. Like, oh, oh. Go online to museum websites. Museum websites are fantastic resources. They really, truly are. And if you are looking for a Viking belt buckle from Scotland, have a look on the National Museum of Scotland website and see if they've got a digital picture that you can look at. Pretty sure they will have, actually. They're fantastic. Never underestimate museums. And in the UK, at least, all our national museums are free because of the National Museums Act, 2001? You can go into any national museum in Britain for free. That's the thing. You should take advantage of that. If you're coming here on a trip, go to the museums for free. All of the museums you can fit in. Do it. Take lots of photos in them. Of course you can take photos in the museums. Do that. It's amazing. Your own footwork and your own research going into places is the most rewarding kind of research. But I understand that not everyone can do that, and that is why online digitised catalogues are the best. So, this feels like I'm telling Granny how to suck eggs, but libraries rule. Libraries are amazing. Um, if you are at a university, you have free access to a library. And you may think that your library sucks, but it's probably better than most of the local libraries around. And if you're not at a university, guess what? Most universities have access to their libraries for non-students. It took me ages to figure that out. Loads of universities, you can just rock up and say, Hello, I live locally. How do I get access to the library? It should be advertised more. Every single university that does this should advertise this as a resource that they provide to the town where they're based. Because it is so, so useful to have access to that kind of a resource, especially if they have a good archives or special collections. They're fantastic. Get to a library. Find your local library. Find your national library. Get a card. Get a reader's card. Get a membership. Whatever you need to get access to those books. Get in there and start reading the books, reading the journals, reading the magazines, reading the papers, whatever they've got. Get in there and read. It's fantastic. The amount of time I spent, I was going to say wasted then, but it's never really wasted, is it? Reading is never wasted. The amount of time I spent during my bachelor's undergraduate degree reading about stuff that I was just interested in. Totally irre irrelevant to my, to my degree and to my dissertation, but, you know, I know how heraldry works now. Badass! So these tips may seem like very vague and teaching granny to suck eggs things, but they're not. The choice can be really overwhelming, and a lot of these things are things that some people just, you know, don't think about. You don't think sometimes that, oh, maybe the university would have resources that I can tap into. University libraries are a fantastic place, and I highly, highly recommend searching that out if you can in your local area. Another thing that I love doing, if I have a couple of hours free, you know, I want to go for a coffee, I want to go for a chill out, I will trawl the secondhand bookshops. Secondhand bookshops are an amazing place to get history books from, and archaeology books from. And very often if you're at a university town, the secondhand bookshops will be full of academic books, which can be very expensive to buy new, and even expensive secondhand sometimes. So if you find good quality academic work, that is a, that is a gold mine. Uh, I would advise looking for books that are not not 50, 60 years old, because research gets superseded, and I tend to look for books that are no older than 10 years old in, in most cases, unless I can definitely not help it, or the subject hasn't really been studied seriously since then. But you do want to be looking at the latest research most of the time, and you want it to be solid, good well backed up stuff. Big reading lists. 
lots and lots of good supporting evidence, that kind of stuff. Heck, you may even find that some of the stuff in the reading list of one of your books turns up at your local second-hand store. Big win. So I guess I have to do a kind of what not to do. Um, I already did a don't just trust YouTubers, because that's obvious to me. But equally, don't trust anything, necessarily. Don't trust me. You shouldn't just trust me when I tell you stuff in my videos. You should go out there and question that. That's good research. Good research is questioning. And what in historical costuming very often is the case is that people will see a reenactor wearing clothes that they really like and ask them to make a pattern for them so that they can make it, which is wonderful. But you are not making a reproduction of historical costume then, are you? You are making a reproduction of somebody else's reenactment clothes. You're not trying your best to replicate an original garment, you're just copying somebody else's garment. And that's lovely of you to do that to somebody and say, I admire your work so much I want to make a copy of it. But it might also be prudent to say, oh I really like your, your clothes, I really like your dress, could you tell me what it finds it's based on, and do you have any sources that I could read up on? Then maybe once you've decided, oh, that's a really, really accurate copy, is there any chance I could like get a pattern off you for that? Because I think that your interpretation is an absolutely solid one. That just puts that extra layer of you doing your due diligence. Do you know what I mean? That's like you saying, oh, I really like this, I want one. But then it's you saying, but I better just make sure that it's Good. I, just, I really like it. Really cool. Just got to make sure it's right. And that, I think, is something that you will get a sense of, yeah, I, I did I did the job. I looked this up. And then if somebody, a member of the public, comes up to you and is like, oh, what's your dress based on? You're not just saying, oh, I just copied off him. You can say, like, oh, this is a copy of a dress found at Hurjolfsnes, and this is the fine number, and this is the fine spot, this is what the original was made from. You get that in-depth intimate knowledge of the clothes that you're making that I find at least really really rewarding and really enjoyable. Keep notes. Keep copious notes of everything that you are doing and try and organize them. I've got notes all over the place, various notebooks all over my house are just filled with notes and now I have no idea where any of my information is. But try and keep your notes organized and that way when you need them you know exactly where they are. And this stuff seems really obvious but again if you're not used to doing research or writing down pages and pages and pages of notes on relatively obscure subjects, let's face it. It's worth knowing! So, one thing that I want to touch on in this video is fabric choice, but it's not going to be me telling you where to buy your fabric. I can't tell you where to buy your fabric because I don't live where you live. Unless you live in Edinburgh, in which case... I still can't tell you where to buy your fabrics because you might want different fabrics to me. I always try and get the closest fabric I can to period fabrics that I can find ethically to my to my standards that I am happy to buy. You may not necessarily have that level of rigour in your costuming, but still, if you are interested in researching the fabrics that you're going to be using, and the textiles that would be appropriate for you to use, you can put that legwork in. And there are many, many books, there are many, many websites, many, many academic papers that will tell you about historical textile studies. Textile studies is its own subject area. You can do a degree in it. You can do a master's in it. So take the time to have a look at that. You need to learn a lot of terminology to do textile research, but the technology is there for you to learn that. You can watch lots of Abby Cox's videos, for example. She is, she is an expert in textile studies in her own right and uses lots of this technical terminology. But then you can go off, see what I'm saying? You can go off with that terminology, Google it, write, read a few articles on what exactly a herringbone twill is, and then you'll know whether or not that's appropriate for you to use. If you search, say, Viking herringbone twill examples, you might get some really, really good finds. I guess my big final kind of always try and do this hint, tip, whatever, is always try to find the primary evidence. Always try to find the evidence from the period if you can. It will be spotty if you're doing Viking Age clothes, it will be fragmentary if you're doing medieval clothes, it might only be paintings if you're doing 18th century clothes. 
try and find the primary evidence. Try and find evidence from the period that you want to make clothes for. And then at the very least, you can go on a Facebook group and say, I'm trying to research what the hell this thing is that looks like a jacket. I found it on this rune stone. Does anybody have any clues? Can anybody point me in the direction of any finds of any museum displays? I could do with some help. And I think that is one of the big ones is don't be afraid to ask for help. I have people asking me for help. And very often I cannot do the research that you want me to do uh, because I am a fairly busy person with jobs. I would love to be able to do everybody's historical research. Maybe one day I'll write a book, but never be afraid to ask people, you know? I, people tag me in posts on Instagram and are like, what do you think of my shoes? And I'm like, cool shoes. Looks like a find. Nice. You know, like, mm -mm, oh, it's a tunic. <laughs> that belt buckle looks a very period. I'm happy to do that stuff, you know? And so are most reenactors. We love helping people. We love people sharing in our research and sharing in our hobby. That's why we do the hobby, is for the community aspect of it. We don't want to be doing this all alone. We want to be doing this with our friends. And if that means that we get to help you guys who are at the start of your research journey or at the start of your reenactment journey to find what you need, I think 99% of people in this hobby will do that with you. Like, I can't think of a single reenactor friend of mine where if I if I sent them a message saying, hey, really love your tunic, any chance you can send me what find it's based off, they wouldn't immediately just bombard me with pages of research. And that's fabulous. It's fabulous. So those are some of my little research tips. I hope you find some of them useful or some of them might open up new areas of opportunity for you. I know it's a little vague, uh, but I'm feeling a little vague this month. <laughs> my brain's feeling a little vague this month. Um, yeah, I hope that you have enjoyed this at least, and that it has provided some diversion and distraction for you on this winter's evening. So, deal chanbaur iawn, in my eto, am a thank you very much indeed for joining me. Thank you to all of my new Patreon persons, you are all superheroes, and I love you to bits, and you are making my life better and making it easier for me to do this, that you guys seem to enjoy, you bunch of nutters. So, deal chanbaur iawn, thank you very much. Tamsronissa, who will I meet you? Bye for now. as you can. You don't need food. Who needs food when you've got books?